Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Abdulaziz Hamid and I'll be presenting the Discontinuous Galerkin Infrastructure Project for FreeGL. Some background on Discontinuous Galerkin. For Continuous Galerkin, the degrees of freedom on the interfaces are shared between elements, while for the Discontinuous Galerkin, each element has its own degrees of freedom on the interface. As shown in the figures, you can see figure on the left. U3 and U2 are shared between the two elements, while in figure on the right, it, the one element has U2 and U3, and the other element has U5 and U8. This introduces more degrees of freedom, and removes the coupling caused by sharing degrees of freedom, but the elements are still coupled using numerical fluxes. Also, the interface integral terms exist in the weak form, they vanish in the weak form of the continuous case because the solution is well defined on the interface and we're evaluating this integral term which is usually a test function multiplied by a numerical flux or in this case ship function, ship function times the normal once on each side of the interface and if the numerical flux is a solution or a shape value well defined in the interface this term vanishes because we are evaluating once using this normal and once using the other normal and adding them and adding them together for the discontinuous case this doesn't vanish because we have numerical flux which depends on a ratio of each side of the interface or a function of the value here and the value there This introduces us to the concept of jumps and averages because this integral term can be expressed as a summation of two integral terms, one over all the faces of the grid and the other over all the interfaces of the grid on which the solution is not well defined. We have a jump on average, the jump and the average. And the quadrature points must be synced on both sides of the interface to have the same spatial coordinates because we're evaluating this integral once over the interface. So we, use, we are using values from here and values from there, both sides of the interface. And we must make sure that the values we're evaluating, the, the point we are evaluating at, is the same on both, on both sides of the interface. So the required modifications are modifying the sparsity patterns to allow for cross-element coupling as a function of the topology of the grid to allow for constant applying strongly applying Dirichlet boundary conditions using the discontinuous interpolations on which which has nodes which have nodes on the boundary using iterators for assembly we need an interface iterator to iterate over all the interfaces of the grid we need to evaluate jumps and averages and we need to sync the quadrature points to have the same spatial coordinates for sparsity patterns in the continuous case we can see that there is already coupling using the shared degrees of freedom while for the discontinuous case the degrees of freedom are not shared so the coupling disappears and before this project we didn't have a way to couple elements without using shared degrees of freedom so after this we made uh, a new dispatch with keyword arguments we added keyword arguments for topology and the cross coupling and now we can couple discontinuous interpolations a grid with mixed interpolations, continuous interpolations, all options are there. Uh, the implementation is mainly the cross element coupling function, which is used internally. The user facing part is just the keywords are the keyword arguments. And the issues faced were mainly of type instabilities and allocations. The type instabilities instabilities were due to some instabilities with interpolations and the allocations were the type instabilities and some functions that we're allocating we didn't have non-allocating version of them so we cre we dispatched them created them and used them 
For constraints, DG elements can have degrees of freedom on the interior of the cell or on the boundary. In case the degrees of freedom are on the interior, the Dirichlet boundary conditions are enforced using, using, a, uh, using a penalty term, while if they are on the boundary, we can use DOF handler just the same way we're using it with the continuous case. Uh, but we need to do some modifications or we did some modifications because the face vertex or edge of indices are empty for discontinuous Lagrange or discontinuous interpolations because as said these degrees of freedom don't belong to the face or a vertex or a cell or, or a edge they belong to the cell so we added Dirichlet boundary DOF indices which falls back to the regular DOF indices for the continuous case but is actually dispatched for the discontinuous case. For iterators, it's actually very straightforward. It, we have interface cache, which, which is two face caches, and we have the degrees of freedom of both cells of the interface, which is used for assembly. And we have interface iterator, which is, works very similarly to face iterator. It iterates over all the interfaces of the cell, once without like we're not iterating once here and once there no we are iterating only once on the interface we can only we can also evaluate jumps and averages using interface values which is two phase values the jumps use the u there minus u here convention because the other convention where we where we're multiplying with the normal vectors can remove some information such as the tangential component of the jump if we're dealing with a vector value problem. We can also obtain the other definition back using by multiplying by the normal vector to the their cell, to the other cell. So if we, we multiply this jump by u by n there, we get the other formulation, the other convention of the jump. We also have shape or function value or gradient jump or average for sync and quadrature points there are two cases one where we have a 2d element then the interface is just a line and it can only be flipped the other case is the 3d case where the interface is a face uh, or a 2d a 2d face uh, here the interface can be flipped or rotated. We had three options for syncing quadrature points. One is to use a transformation matrix. The two other options rely on caching. One is to cache the permutation and the other to cache all value interface values for each for each possible transformation. We chose to use a transformation matrix and generated based on the transformation because the other two options were too much caching. Syncing quadrature points implementation we have interface transformation struct which stores all the values needed to transform a point from one side of the interface to another. We have get transformation matrix which returns a transformation matrix given the transformation information we need interface inter with given the interface transformation information and we have transform interface points which takes an a vector which takes a vector of points and transforms them from one side of the interface to another uh, quadrature points are transformed on each reinitialization of interface values this can be further optimized by checking whether we need to transform or not because we can have the same transformation multiple times in a row while we're iterating. For second quadrature points, we use, for, for the transformation matrix, we use an affine transformation, which is a function of the shape of the face or the shape of the interface, shape, reference shape of the interface, and the angle of rotation, and whether if it's flipped or not. The shape of the interface determines five or so matrices depends on the shape of the interface which are of already predetermined values and the rotation angle determines the how we rotate the interface against each other 
and the flip determines the flipping the flipping and it determines whether we need to do a pri priori transformation to be able to flip um, along an axis without without cracking some assumptions or without we transform to a reference shape that we know which axis we can flip about so if we, if we don't need to flip we don't need to do this transformation first here is an example we need to transform from this face to this face the face of the le on the left to the, th to the face on the right we first shear the face to the shape we talked about now we rotate it such that the lowest number the lowest index vertex is along the x-axis so we can flip about the x-axis we flip about the x-axis then we rotate it back to the angle we want and we shear it back to the reference triangle we already know if we didn't need to flip we could have just root a sheared rotated and sheared back there uh, there are here there are two rotations while if we didn't need to flip we could we can we could only do two rota one rotation we also implemented a heat equation tutorial based on the unified analysis paper using the interior penalty method as shown here the week 4 the heat equation tutorial was tested for convergence and it exhibited similar results to this of the paper the convergence rate for the l2 norm was the order plus one and for the h1 norm was the order for future work we're working on arbitrary order interpolations which is already done for lagrange with hypercubes and we're working on better methods to deal with mixed grids because we currently need to have interface uh, interface values for each combination of grid shapes or for, sorry for each combination of cell shapes or reference shapes for and we're working on interfacing dg with adaptive mesh refinement thanks